This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Okay, let's jump into it. We mentioned earlier, Rob Van Dam won the money in the bank ladder match at WrestleMania, which planted the seeds for him to eventually cash it in at ECW's one night stand. Number two pay-per-view in June of 06 and Keller would report the idea for Rob Van Dam to win the money in the bank match and use it, set up the ECW main event was Paul Heyman's idea. Paul Heyman is apparently the guy who's been pushing behind the scenes for this. And Vince McMahon likes the idea, agrees to it knowing it's going to give the pay-per-view a natural main event that it otherwise didn't have. Do you remember this thinking going into WrestleMania? Well, if we know we're going to do another one night stand and really get ECW kicked off, what if we sort of lay the groundwork at WrestleMania and have uh, Rob win the case? Well, yeah, it only made sense. And it was also a situation of Rob really kind of standing out at the time. So Rob was, you know, Rob was kind of on that upward swing and it made sense for it to be Rob and it made sense for it to be Rob, even with the ECW pay-per-view coming up even more. So it's mentioned more cachet to that. Let's talk about ECW. Uh, Wade would say almost on a whim last week, Vince McMahon initiated a full-time relaunch of extreme championship wrestling as a brand. Uh, this comes uh, at the end of April when this is announced. And of course, Wade says the plans change and expand daily, but in short, the idea is to exploit the equity that already exists in the brand beyond the annual June pay-per-views. Uh, and so they're also talking about how they're going to be bringing in other talent. Uh, they're being offered full-time deals. And those names include Sandman, Sabu, Balls Mahoney, Just Incredible, Lance Storm, Francine, and he says perhaps others within the company. There's a lot of other unutilized talent that they think they can tap into on this ECW side of things, including kid cash, super crazy psychosis, Johnny Swinger, Al snow. And of course, big names like Rob Van Dam, Chris Benoit and Mick Foley as well. He says the biggest uh, question, which is yet to be finalized is how the brand will actually be presented after the June show. He says there's no new time slot on USA or any other network that he knows of that has a deal in place. And for it to have feel like a true relaunch, you need a separate weekly show. Uh, and he also freestyles that CM Punk, Paul London, Brian Kendrick, and Matt Hardy are also a lot of other names that could fit with this ECW brand. What really sticks out to me is almost on a whim is the way this report starts. Was this sort of all of a sudden, do you remember coming to the office and it's like, okay, we're starting ECW. There wasn't like a big discussion or planning a rampway, a built a runway. It's just, nope, we're doing it. Oh yeah. Cause that's just the way you do business in a publicly traded billion dollar company. Well, I guess my question was, is it always feels chicken in the egg. When you talk about TV deals, if you're going to launch a new television brand, you need a television clearance. Did sci-fi or, or, or did someone present an offer and say, Hey, we would like to have WB programming. So we had an opportunity, but what we didn't have was a theme. Does that make sense? Well, no, Vince was looking to, based on the success of the pay-per-views and looking for something, create more content. Everybody's always looking for more content. The networks, um, content, content, content. So if you create new content, now you have to find a home for it. So the content was there and looking at it from that vantage point, we could reinvent ECW. Now you need a place for it to go. And then the FX deal came about, but it was kind of out there shopping and didn't take long to shop at all. Do you think any of this would have happened had it not been for the success of that rise and fall of ECW DVD? Oh, I know it wouldn't have happened if that hadn't been successful. I mean, that sort of is step one and then one night stand in 05. And then you got to start looking around and thinking, shit, maybe there is something here, right? Right. You know, when you, you look at the, you know, the desire always to have a, a desire to create your own competition, you're still looking for that as well. And maybe, maybe this could be it again, create a third brand that is something that, um, might work. Who knows? champion at that ECW pay-per-view, but the betting line this week is that it will be Cena. quote. They're not going to have Hunter win the belt earlier than they'd prefer just to avoid Cena getting booed at the ECW event. 
in hindsight, the, the heat, if you will, for John Cena versus Rob Van Dam in front of a, a rabid ECW crowd is what made that match so special. I was glad to hear, or at least read, uh, Hey, they're, they don't really care about Cena getting booed here. That's kind of the idea, right? Us versus them. You need that. Yeah. You got your EC. Look, the ECW audience was a loyal audience yes. that was anti everything else. That same audience would go to a WWE show and maybe cheer John Cena and yeah. Yeah, whatever, but they're a very loyal and boisterous audience. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.